In this video, I'll be showing you how to build these cool customizable progress bars in Notion. So here we have an example that I've set up for this video. So this, as you can see, is a habit tracker. And here we have the customizable progress bar that I'm gonna be showing you how to build today. So as you can see, we've got emojis inside the progress bar. I've even got the percentage of checkboxes that have been checked and it's changing color as you get closer and closer to hitting 100%. You can simply just check these off. And as you can see, as you go, the progress bar will increase. You can also view this on a calendar view so you might have seen habit trackers like this before so each of these will display on the date in the calendar and again you can simply just check and uncheck the boxes to see your progress increase now these progress bars are super customizable here's another one that i set up so this is a water intake tracker so you'll simply check off the boxes throughout the day to track how many cups of water you've drank and as you can see i've set up a cool progress bar here that actually shows the drops of water instead of the checkbox you can really have a lot of fun with this here is another one that i set up that actually uses stars instead for the checkboxes. So in the rest of this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create these cool customizable progress bars for yourself and how you can add them to the databases that you already have set up. So in this example, I am gonna be using a habit tracker database to add our customizable progress bar, but you can actually add these progress bars to any databases that you currently have. But I felt like a habit tracker was a good example because I know a lot of people use habit trackers on Notion already. So here is a simple habit tracker that I've set up. So we simply have the date in this column. I've set up a checkbox for each of the different habits that I want to complete. And we're gonna now set up a progress bar. So as I check these off throughout the day, it will show our progress. Now, one thing that is gonna make this a little bit cleaner and save us a little bit of space is you don't actually need to see the titles here so I've actually added an icon to each of these that represents the habit so I can actually close this a little bit make it a bit smaller so that you can only see the icon and this is just going to save us a lot of space if you do want to change the icon you can simply click on the checkbox and then click on here and it will allow you to select an icon and there are tons of different notion icons pre-added into the system okay so I already think that looks a lot cleaner now the progress bar that I showed you in the example is actually built using notion formula so we're going to start by adding a new formula property to our database. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol here, just type in formula and select this option. And I'm just going to call it progress. And to actually write in our formula, you want to click on the formula edit button, which is going to bring up the panel. And this is where we're actually going to type in our formula. So the first thing we need to do is we need a way of counting how many checkboxes are checked. Now, the way that we can do that in Notion formulas is by converting each checkbox into a number. So therefore, if the checkbox is unchecked, it will display the number zero. But if it is checked, it will display the number one. And then you can simply just add up the ones to see how many are checked. So to do that, we can use the two number function. So if you just type in two number like this and you can then select it here from the sidebar and inside these parentheses we need to add our first habit so if you look here in the sidebar you'll see all of the properties that you've added to the table so the first one I'm going to add in is yoga session so that's one of the habits now you do need to add an individual two number function for each of the different habits and we're actually going to add them together so if I just add a plus symbol and again I'm going to type in two number select it here and inside this parentheses we're going to add in our next one which is write in journal and so on so I'm just going to keep adding a plus symbol adding in two number until I've added all of the different habits together so this is what that now will look like so I have six different habits here in my table so I've added the two number function six times and each time I've added a different habit now as I said what this is going to do is convert each of these checkboxes into a number and then add all of the numbers together which is going to give you the total amount of checkboxes that are checked so let's just show how this works so I'm going to click done and as you can see it currently says zero now if I start checking these off it's going to count how many are checked so it is working correctly so just before we jump back into the tutorial I just want to mention that my new second brain template is now available on my store it's a super advanced all-in-one productivity system I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested so that's all back to the tutorial okay let's go back into our formula so I'm going to click on here edit property and formula edit now we're actually going to reference this piece of code here a lot throughout the the rest of the formula and I don't want to have to type this out every single time so we can actually turn it into a variable which essentially just means that we're going to give this piece of code here a name and every time I mention that name Notion will know that I mean this piece of code so it just saves me having to type it out every single time so we can use the let function to do that so right at the start up here I'm just going to type the words let open a parentheses and I'm also just going to add a close parentheses at the end to close this off now we do actually want to add some more code in between these two parentheses here so I'm actually just going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and hit enter a couple of times so that it goes down here so that we've got this space here in the middle where I can write the rest of the code now the 
only other thing we need to do with this is we actually need to give this piece of code a name. So you want to write that right here at the start. So let's just call this one habits complete like this. And you then just need to add a comma as well. So habits complete is our little code name. And then this is the code that it will reference. And I'm just gonna add a comma at the end as well. So at this point, if I click done, it will simply just make the box go to zero. And that's because we no longer actually have anything really written in our formula. This is essentially just saying that we want the habits complete code to mean this, but I've not actually got anything in the formula. So if I just type in our habits complete here, it's essentially just gonna call this piece of code. So it's just gonna run whatever we had before. So if I click done having written it here it's then just going to do what it was doing earlier where if I check off the checkboxes it counts how many are checked so we can now see that this has all been set up correctly so I can now just remove this little bit of code here now the next thing we want to do is we actually want to show a different output depending on how many checkboxes are checked so we can actually use if statements to do that the if function will simply test a condition and will return one value for true and another for false so in this example we could say something like if one checkbox is checked then we want to display this this output if two checkboxes are checked then we want to display this instead and so on so as I said we're going to be using multiple if statements so in that case we want to use the ifs function so if you just type ifs like this open and close a parentheses and we're going to write our statements in between these parentheses here now to give us a bit more room I am again just going to hold down shift and hit enter and that's just going to move this onto the next line so that we have some space in here to write our if statements so let's start with the first statement and that's going to be if all six checkboxes are checked then what do we want the formula to display? So firstly, to check if all six have been checked, we want to first call our habits complete because if you remember, habits complete will simply work out the number of checkboxes that have been checked. So we want to firstly call habits complete and we want to check if this is equal to six. Now in Notion, you do need to use two equal signs like this. We're gonna add a comma and then two quotation marks. And inside here, we actually want to type in what we want to display in the box if the habits complete is equal to six. So therefore, if all six checkboxes are checked inside here, we can write what we want it to display. So I'm actually gonna be using emojis to create our progress bar. So to quickly grab an emoji, let me just click done and go back onto our Notion page. Now, if you type in a colon, like this and the name of an emoji so let's go with the checkbox it will appear here and you can actually grab it now you can actually grab any emoji that you like so whatever you want to display as your progress bar is what you want to grab at this point so there are a few different check marks here as you can see i'm going to go with this green one if you wanted the star symbol for example if you type in star that will appear so just pick out whichever emoji you want to display in the box and i'm just going to highlight the emoji copy it using my keyboard and let's just go back now into our progress bar so inside here I'm simply just going to paste in six of those emojis in a row. So when all six checkboxes have been checked, it's simply going to display all of these six emojis in a row in our box. So then I'm going to add a comma and we're going to hold down shift and hit enter on our keyboard to go to the next line. And now we can write in the next if statement. So again, we're going to call habits complete. And this time we're going to check if it is equal to five. So I'm going to type equals equals five comma. And now we can tell it what we want it to display if only five of the checkboxes are checked. So again, I'm going to put two quotation marks and I'm just going to highlight the emojis up here and I'm going to copy five of them and paste that in this box. And in the place of the sixth one, we're actually going to put a different emoji. So let's just go back to our Notion page just for a second. So again, I'm going to search for an emoji and I'm going to type in square and the one I'm looking for is this white large square here but feel free to pick any other emoji that you like but I think this one works quite well and I'm going to click back into our formula and right here at the end in place of this checkbox we're just going to paste in that white square and again I'm just going to add a comma at the end and now we can hit shift and enter to go to the next line and we're now going to add in our next one so in this case what I'm going to do is actually just copy this line and paste it in below and we can just amend the details so next we're going to be checking if the habits is equal to to four. So therefore, if only four of the checkboxes are checked, then what do we want it to display? So in this case, we want to see two of these. So I'm just gonna copy that white one, just remove another checkbox and paste in the white one as well. And as you can imagine, we're now just gonna add a line like this for each of the different possible outputs. You want to go all the way down to one. So I've just done that. So this is now what it should look like. Now, the final thing is with Notion formulas, you can actually add an otherwise option. So if none of these conditions are true, what do we want the formula to display? So in this case, if none of these are true, 
that means that none of the check boxes are checked. So what we can do is again, if I just hit shift and enter to go to the next line, you don't need to add in the condition this time. You can simply just add in the quotation marks and we can just put in what we want it to display if none of the check boxes are checked. So in that case, I'm just gonna paste in our white square six times. So it just displays empty like this. So now what I'm gonna do is just hit done so I can show you what we have so far. So here is our progress bar. So let me just uncheck all of the boxes. So as you can see, this is how it will display. And as you check them, it will increase as we go. So it's already looking pretty good. The other thing that I want to add though, is I actually want it to show the percentage next to it so that we can see the percentage of check boxes that have been checked. So to do that, we're gonna click on here again and go back into our formula. So what we can do is actually just add the percentages into the formula output here. So let's start with the top one. So if all six of the check boxes are checked, then right next to our progress bar, I'm gonna add a space and we're just gonna type in 100%. Now for the next ones, you will have to work the percentages out manually, but it's actually pretty easy to do. So let's start with this one. So if five out of six of the check boxes are checked, then what is the percentage? So you can simply just do five divided by six, which will equal something like this. And then you can simply just multiply this by 100 and that will give you the percentage. So in this case, it's gonna be 83.3%. So I'm just gonna round it down to one decimal point. So just here before the quotation mark, I'm just gonna add 83.3% like this. And then you'll then just want to do that for all of these. So I'm just gonna add these in and this is what it will look like. And for our final one, I am also just gonna add in 0% like this. And let's click done so I can show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it now displays here at the end. So as we check and uncheck, it will display the percentage alongside, which is really nice. Now, the next thing that I want to do is actually add some styling to our text here so that the percentage will actually change color depending on how many habits that we've checked off. So if you remember, I showed you that in the example, it would be red when it's a low percentage, orange or yellow when it's in the middle. And when you're close to 100%, it will go to green. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm gonna click back on here and edit the property. Now, the first thing I want to do is I actually just want the text for every single output to be bold just because I think it stands out a little bit more. So to apply styling to every single output, we can actually add it right at the end. And we're actually going to use the dot style function to do that. So you want to just type right here at the end after this parentheses dot style and open and close a parentheses like this. Now the dot style function, here is the description. It allows you to add style and colors to the text. And these are all of the different outputs that you can pick from. Now the one we're going to go with here is a bold. So just inside these parentheses, I'm going to type in two quotation marks and inside a B and B as you can see here means bold. So if I just click done for just a second, as you can see, that's simply just bolded the text. Next, we actually want to add specific styling to each of the different outputs. So I'm gonna use the dot style function like we have here, but I'm just gonna apply it to the individual output. So let's start with the last one here. So if it is equal to 0%, I think it would be nice if 0% displayed in red. So just here after our quotation mark, we're gonna type dot style, open and close the parentheses. And inside here, we're gonna add our two quotation marks and I'm just gonna type the word red. Now now this applies to the text color, so that's what it means. Now I'm gonna just copy this here. So from the dot style to the end, I'm gonna copy it. And we're gonna also apply it to this one. So if only one habit is checked, then I would like that to be red as well. And you need to place this just before the comma, but after the quotation marks, I'm simply just gonna paste that in and that is gonna now be applied to this one. For the next one, if two are checked, I wanna make it orange. So just before the final comma, I'm gonna paste this in, but we are gonna change the word red here to orange. Now for the next two, I think we'll make them yellow. So I'm just gonna again, paste this in before the comma and let's just change this to yellow. And I'm gonna copy that from dot style to the parentheses and paste it in here just before the comma. So these two will be yellow. And for the top two, if five or six checkboxes are checked, I actually want it to be green. So again, I'm gonna paste it in just before the comma, but let's change the word yellow for green. And I'm gonna copy that one and just apply it to this one as well. So this is now what it should look like. So that is our formula complete. Let's click done so we can just check that it works. So let me just uncheck the checkboxes. So at 0% it's red. And as we start checking them off, you'll notice the colors changing, gradually getting towards green. So that is our habit tracker set up with our customized progress bar. One other thing I did briefly just wanna show you is how you can actually switch this to a calendar view like I showed in the example, just for anyone that doesn't already know. So this is the table view, but if you would prefer to see it as a calendar, you can click on the three dots here, select layout and switch it to 
to calendar and that will automatically place your habits entry onto the date that you placed in the date property but it usually won't display any of the other properties so to add them on you can simply click on the three dots select properties and here are all of the different check boxes so I'm just going to use this symbol here to unhide them they'll then display on the card so I'm just going to do all of the different habits and then finally at the bottom you want to add in your progress formula and that will then look like this so you can just add other entries on the next day so if you click on here you can add another entry so I'll just call it habits as well and this is what it will look like and feel free to set this up as a recurring template if you want it to automatically be populated each day and the final thing that I just wanted to touch on before I end this video is this was the other example that I used at the start of the video where we had a very similar progress bar but it just used these drops instead as the progress bar so I just wanted to show you the formula if you wanted to create something similar for yourself so it is a very very similar formula we are just using the two number to add together the check boxes to work out how many have been checked off and I've just labeled that variable water intake and then we're simply just checking how many check boxes are checked and the only difference is that I'm just using this water drop emoji instead of the checkbox emoji inside the formula and that's it so that's how you can create these cool customizable progress bars and you can actually add this to any database that you have as long as you have some sort of checkbox system you can apply these progress bars. You can check out all of my pre-made Notion templates over on my store, including this super advanced second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. And if you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials every week.